Hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to be uh, going through a video on how to install a Dampierre on Windows 8. And before we get started, um, there's some things you need on your computer before you can actually install Dampierre. So the first thing that you're going to need is Java JDK, which I have right here. And then you're also going to need um, Postgres, which is under my program files and it is right here. So now that you see uh, that I have those two things already installed, uh, you're going to need to install those things if you haven't already. And you're also going to uh, need to go ahead and go into Postgres. and go under your server Postgres and um, create a database called a Dempierre. I already have it right here because I've been working with this uh, technology for a while but if you uh, to create a new one you just right click database click new database and uh, tell it name it a Dempierre and just hit OK. So now that we have all that all the way uh, to actually install a Dempierre uh, we're going to need to go to our system right here and we're going to have to go to advanced system settings and we're going to have to make some environment variables and you're going to need three environment variables and you can see I already have these in here and the three that you're going to need are a Dempierre home, Java home, and Postgres home. So I'm going to go through and I uh, explain to you how to like set those up. So if you if you don't have these already, you're going to need to create a new one. But since I already have it, I'm going to click Edit to show you how to get there. And then you're going to name the variable as NPR Home, underscore home, in uh, all caps. And then to get the variable value, you've got to tell the computer where this is uh, located in your computer. So you're going to go to your files and go into where you have a NPR located. So I'm in the C drive. And then click on NPR. Then up here, you're just going to right click and copy this into the variable value box right here. Then you're going to click OK. You're going to continue to do that for Java Home and Postgres Home. So, again, you would create a new one, but I'm going to hit Edit since I already have it. And you're going to name it Java underscore Home, all caps, and then you're going to do the same thing for the variable value. You're going to go into your files and you're going to find where you have Java JDK located, click on it, and then highlight this, copy it, and paste it back into the variable value. Click OK. Then you do the same thing for Postgres. You would create a new one, and but I'm going to edit it, and you're going to create and call it Postgres Home, and just like you see it here, and then you're going to have to tell it that it's location. So go into your files, and go to where you have it, mine is located under program files, Postgres, and go ahead and go into your version, mine is 9.5, and copy and paste this right here into your variable value. Click OK. The next thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to edit your path that's located in system variables. So if this is going to already be existed for you, so just go ahead and click edit. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to copy and paste the variable value into uh, Notepad works really well. So I've done that here as you can see. And here's what I have in there currently. And I already have these programs and the, the environmental variables programmed into it. So I already have them listed here at the end. But what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to add this line of code right here into uh, onto the end of your uh, your variable value so once you've done that uh, it's just like really important to make sure that you get all the semicolons and colons in the same in the right place and this is basically where they're located so everything that you have entered into their home values is going right here and so once you've done that you're going to copy and paste your new line after you've added it to the end, you're going to copy and paste your new line of uh, information into the variable value for your path. And click OK. 
and that's all you need to do in the environment variables. Click OK again, and OK. So the next step in installing Dimpier is to actually go into uh, your Dimpier folder, and you're going to click on run a Dimpier.bat. Oh, excuse me, you're going to click on run setup.bat. So then this uh, a Dimpier server setup is going to come up, and it's really important to uh, check to make sure that what you have filled in is correct. And right here, your Java home, you've got to put in the location where it is. That's what we use for the variable value, and same thing for the Dimpier. And then your application server, that's your computer name. My computer's name is Emily. And your web port, this should be uh, good, should be what's in there, but if it's not, change it to 8080. And then... The, your database server is localhost, your database name, Dempierre, database port 5432, your database user is Postgres, and then for your database admin password and normal password, that's going to be whatever you set your Postgres password to be. So um, for some of you it might be Postgres, but for some of you it might be a unique uh, password. And then you're going to make sure that your database type is Postgres SQL. Don't worry about the mail server for right now, uh, you'll deal with that later on. So we're going to go ahead and test it. And as you can see, the only thing that came up not valid was the mail server, which we're not too worried about right now, but everything else is okay. So we're going to go ahead and save it. And it says that the uh, files are saved, so click OK. And then while it's finishing up, we're just going to wait here until it goes through it all. Alright, and now that it's finished, you can see that it says build successful. And uh, I did pause the video to let it go ahead and go through it, but it took it three minutes, so just be patient. And so now the next step is that we're going to go to the utils folder in the dump here. And we're going to go to run import a Dempier bat. Here it is. And where it says pressing key to continue. And um, what's going to happen is uh, it's going to, during this, it's going to create all the tables that uh, you're going to need for a Dempierre. And this also is going to take a while, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again while this is uh, taking off. But just be patient, it could take a couple minutes. So uh, now you can see that all the tables have been loaded in, and because this pressing key to continue uh, line of code came up, so you're all good on this section. So we're just going to press enter. And the final step in making sure that this installed properly is you're going to need to go back into your Dimpier main folder and we're going to open up run a Dimpier bat. And this is a good sign. We've got the Dimpier logo coming up. It's loading. All right, and now we just have to connect our server. So go ahead and click this dialog box. And we just need to uh, test our database right here. Just make sure that all this is like what you filled in for when you're doing the initial setup. And so it came back with a check mark, so we're good there. So we're going to check it. And it, as you notice, it turned from the red and it lit up to white like the rest. And um, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be already default in your system, but it's uh, you're going to need to log in with user ID garden admin, and then your password is also garden admin. So we're going to go ahead and check it. And just leave all this stuff as default, and go ahead and check again. And the Dempier is opening up. And here's the Dempier. Go into the menu, and you're making sure that all this is here. Now, just to do a make sure check, we're going to go into Postgres and make sure that all the tables that we loaded in are there for the Dempierre database. So let's go into Postgres, Databases, Dempierre, 
and Dimas, Debeer, and tables. Here they are, 723. So all the tables were successfully uh, imported in, so that's great. So you have now successfully installed a Debeer. Congratulations. And uh, it, it may have been a little lengthy, had to wait for some things, but this it's definitely worth it. So thank you.